Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really depending on the guests we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miotis, and on social media, know me as Peter Beats. August 11th, a film called G-Lock, which is a sci-fi adventure film, will be dropping on VOD. You can watch that. We are speaking to two actors who are in this film. We are speaking to Stephen Moyer and Casper Van Dien. Gentlemen, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hi, Pete. Thanks, Petey. Can, can I call you Petey? Of course you can. Absolutely. It's, it's like when 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 people my a lot of people call me Stevie, and uh, but it feels really weird like when like the grown ups call me Stevie. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. I'll I'll, I'll call, call you Steven, but if you want me to call you Stevie, I will. But I'll call you Steven. Call just... me Stevie, and I'm going to call you Petey. Go for it. That's that's great. Right off the I'm bat, you never said I could call him Stevie. I don't know. Sorry, sorry, Casper, you can't call me Stevie. I'm going to call you Classy. <laughs> no, 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 I am just for this 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on fire so far. <laughs> this is a great start, but um, very quickly, uh, G Lock, this is a film. Um, I kind of want to know, um, we'll, we'll go around here, two kind of round table questions, uh, specifically when you kind of got, um, when you when you got a look at the script and you were told about this project, what was kind of going through your mind? We'll start Casper. What was going through your mind when you got this idea of doing a sci-fi adventure film like this? I, I was like, Stevie Moyer? No way! I'm in! <laughs> I'm so in! If I get to work with the great Stevie Moyer, I mean, I'm like, what? <laughs> um, I, I love the script. I thought it was great. I thought it was really well written. I love speaking to the director. He's so knowledgeable. Uh, Tom Patton is fabulous and and and, and when Steve and I went out and we ate with him and, and we just listened to what he had to say. We went out to dinner and he spoke and it was just, uh, he really, he had, every, he knew it all. He, he, he was a knowledgeable uh, director. And, and that's always something that's a plus because sometimes there's some directors that come in and they, they don't have what, it, they don't, they don't have the, the wealth of the information and knowledge that you would want them to have going into a project. Um, and, but he did, and he's a young guy and I think he's going to go really far. No, absolutely. Steven, what about you? What was kind of going through your mind when you read the script for G-Lock? Well, you know, one of the things I will say is that is that the the what we do when we're doing sci-fi stuff is you it's as there's a suspension of disbelief in the framework, right? You 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 get the framework of this thing and it's it, like True Blood or like Starship Troopers or any of these things, they're built it's telling a story of real life humanity but in a sci-fi setting in order to sometimes be able to to sort of hit things more on the nose than you would if you were telling that story in an ordinary way tom had created a fantastic a brilliant emotional story about what is going on in the world in terms of kind of environmental disaster but also a sort of straight emotional father daughter you know, father's lost his wife. He's bringing up his daughter by himself. And um, I just loved it. It's so well written. It's so well constructed. And, um, and you know, Caspi sci-fi Van Dien is just, was, was, a, was a big selling point. No, absolutely. Well, yeah, you guys touched on it a little bit, but compared to other projects you've worked on in, in the past, Casper, what was what was it like working on this project compared to other projects in the past? Like, did you have to prepare for the role a bit differently? Was it there were some challenges that came with it? What was G-Lock like compared to other projects? Well, um, I mean, uh, I, I've never been one to, to say this kind of stuff or, or anything, but like, I, I had a I had a real romance with Stephen. I mean, I uh, my wife calls it that and everything like that. I really hit it off with him and uh and for me i, I had a a very uh intimate valuable connection with this actor and i felt like that only would help enhance what we were doing and what we were trying to do on on screen and so we we, we connected on many different levels and we really uh, we had a lot to converse about and it, we, it just felt uh that that helped uh elevate where we were going to go within the script. And then when we just got on set, we kind of fed off of each other. For me, this is my experience. I'm not going to speak for him, mm -hmm. but for me and my experience, I, uh, I, I felt like we would just, we just keep going. And, and, and it was just, we were like, 
uh, pushing each other to to have fun and to be in the experience and to really to, you know help elevate the project. And I I feel like it did for me with him especially. Um, and and I love that. I, I really uh, one of the most uh, you know for this little film we're doing here and getting to work with somebody else that uh, just, I just really appreciate him. So I'm going to just say that. That's Steven, beautiful. I wouldn't be so, Stephen, I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the last time you work with Casper. I feel like even before we kind of started this, there's like there's a so, chemistry there, no, no, man. No, there no, is for sure. That was, that was a beautiful thing. There, thank you, Casper. I didn't feel any of that, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would hope not. I mean, <laughs> hang on. Let me try and see if I can get it. <laughs> you, can edit, you can edit this bit out. <laughs> I, I had a really amazing time with Casper. It was uh, no, I, <laughs> what, what he's what he's saying is 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 true. It it was it, it, Tom. I just go back to what what Casper said. Tom is so smart. He he is. He's been making these little films. You know, his first budget was like thirty thousand dollars. Then like fifty thousand. Then seventy five thousand. And then you know, two peanuts and a, and, a, and a whip it for hours. And, um, but he is somebody who is going to be gigantic. And so having somebody like him who just has this sort of flair and creative juice is, is really awesome. Then when I got to meet Casper, it was, it was like a cherry on top of the gravy in many ways, because I, I, I really, we just got, we got on so well and, both wanted it to be great, and yeah. and so so in terms of like prepping for it, it was just a lovely, lovely experience. And Tala, who plays the third sort of wheel on this, um, is is really good, and she's doing brilliantly in the UK right now. She's in a massive series playing the lead, and uh, yep. which all happened after this. And so it was just a really blessed little time, and and. Um, if you'd seen like where we were shooting in the middle of York in England, and then what they've managed to create from that, we were in this this, this converted pig farm that is now a studio, and and the sets are great, the lighting's great. George, the the DP, did a wonderful job, and for 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 all of those components to come together in the way they did with John Rhys Davies, and you know it's a really cracking little film, and and we had a ball doing it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, one thing I kind of want to, to ask you both, um, and this could be a, like, the, John could also ask, uh, answer this as well, um, is you look at yourself, you look, you look Steve, Stephen, Casper, John, you've all been a part of, Stephen, you, it's more of a show, so True Blood, but like you're all part of kind of like a franchise in the past, right? Casper with Starship Troopers, yeah. uh, John with Indiana Jones and Lord of the Rings, yourself with True Blood. As kind of an actor and a storyteller, um, what is it like? Work, like what are things that we we don't maybe know about about working on a franchise where there's more than one film? Is it more difficult? Is it easier than we would think? Like Casper, when you were kind of told Star Trek Trooper and then another one, another one, like what was that kind of like? How did you kind of prepare for that? Well, I tried to get in the second Star Trek Troopers, but they didn't want me. So <laughs> that one, was, that one was difficult. But then they brought me back for the third. And then uh, I, and then they brought me back as a producer on the fourth, which was just an animated one. And they didn't want me to do the voiceover, but they got a guy that sounded like me. And then for the fifth one, I did the voiceover for it. You're making me so, feel, but you're making me feel bad now. So the second one was <laughs> hard for me. And you're bringing up, you know, this is emotional hey. because I felt like such, I'm, I'm, I'm stroking you, baby. It's all right. Well, it on, I, well you've been, you've been. My point is, you you didn't just work on one Starship Trooper project. That was you're right. Point. You are correct, sir. And I also did the pinball machine. I did the voiceover for. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and that counts, I think, somewhere in some somewhere in, in like. I in want that pinball machine. You know, yeah, um, can you track down that pinball machine for us? I have it in my garage. <laughs> Could you do it now, please? <laughs> I, I can do it now. I want one. Uh, oh, right. No, go on, oh, show us. Yeah. see it. Yes. I'm going to oh. walk you guys through my house as I'm doing this, but you gotta have, we might have to talk about other stuff. But let's, I'm going to show you the pinball machine. I can't oh, believe yes. it. This is the whole interview is going to be. Oh, my God. I, I was, <laughs> are you going to play while we finish this interview? Is that going to happen? I, here we go. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. This is my garage. Oh, that's awesome. You guys see it? 
That's so cool. Show me around your look at this. <laughs> That's awesome. That Show me so other cool. stuff in your garage. Do you know if these are like very rare? Like, are there like are there a bunch of these, Casper, or is it like like? I have no idea. I have no idea. But that's <laughs> get up, you bag. I can turn up the volume, but I'm not going to. Yeah, this is my garage. I have uh, search troopers posters in there. That's where I work out. Gym, my Where's car, my tools. Where's all my posters? Where's all the posters? <laughs> oh, Where's my movies? I don't. I don't have the G Lock poster. I got the G Lock shirt. With whatever it says on the back, but the basis in- the basis of my 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 question, Casper, was like working on more than one, like playing the same character in like more than one project of a series type thing. Like how like is that? Do you find that challenging? That was what I was kind of going for. When when I went back and I did Starship Troopers three, which we shot in South Africa, and Ed Newmeyer, who wrote RoboCop and Starship Troopers, uh, when he directed that one. Uh, I went on and put the uniform, which I still fit in my uniform, which was awesome because it was yeah, you 19, do. 97 to 19, 2008. Because and, you work out in that garage, man. Yeah, go work out in that garage. <laughs> um, but it, it was it was amazing. It was surreal to put it back on. Put the suit back on was, was really, it was kind of surreal. And even doing the voiceover for it was surreal. It's always fun to play something that you your fans like and everything like that. And then going on to another sci-fi thing is always more fun because then we get to go on a new spaceship. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. the Roger Young, but it's whatever the one was called that we were on. And this one, I'm not quite sure. I don't even remember the name of the ship. Did it have a name? You remember, Stephen? Uh, oh, God. We played, a, we played a Comic-Con ship game the other day. <laughs> yeah. And I was such a disaster, and I do not know what our ship was called. In we have to finally probably find what that ship was called. Maybe it didn't even have a name because we were just like on a like a, a, a like a. It was like a sort of storage ship or something. Wasn't yeah, it? it was like yeah, just generic, probably like. Tom generic. would know. Tom was going to be so embarrassed when he finds out. <laughs> <laughs> for, for just a second. paycheck, man. Steven, for you, for like, for, for like a lot of people know you from True Blood, season to season, how was kind of that kind of, you know, dealing with possible big situations with your characters, big dynamics of your character changing? I mean, I feel like that can be difficult, especially to show yeah. True Blood where so many different layers and so many things happen. You know, the interesting thing, each, each season had very much had its own thematic yeah. And obviously it didn't change kind of cinematographically mm-hmm. through that so much. Um, but Alan Ball is extraordinary in that he never wants you to do the same thing ever again. Mm-hmm. So he never puts your character in the same position. He always changes the way that you would react to it. If he does put you in the same situation again, it's because he wants you to act differently this time to how you acted before, right? So it, it, it's, it makes for a, a really kind of inventive world. You, you, you always feel like you're doing something new. Yep. Um, it's one of the funny things is like, you know, we'd shoot for six, seven months and then you'd go away for five months and then you come back again. And, and there is like, like Casper was saying, there's this moment where you put the costume back on again and and for me, obviously, the accent. And so it's slipping back into the accent, slipping back into the costume, slipping back into those shoes that he wore is a real kind of submersion without sounding wanky. It's like a real submersion back into the sort of world that Casper that sort of touched on. It's, it's a really interesting thing because you sort of, it's like sort of literally sort of putting on a second skin and becoming that again. And there's a great joy in that. And, um, and then as the characters changed, all of our characters went through these sort of, you know, as they have to after over through 80 episodes, you know, you sort of, you have to change. It can't be the same all the time. And, uh, and Alan certainly was never interested in that. So there's a beauty in getting back to play the character and watching them grow, you know, for sure. No, absolutely. Well, gentlemen, we're going to wrap up. And thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn of the Chat about G-Lock. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Brady. Nice thank to meet you, you man. And uh, August 11th, they can, uh, they, the, it will be out and they can check it out, correct? August 11th. It's August a great 11th. picture. It really is. Great, guys. Yeah. Well, seriously, congrats on the film and uh, all the best in the future. This has been uh, Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Casper Van Dien, Stephen Moyer, and Petey Beats signing off. 
Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.